Excellent. And I can be heard also. I'm happy about that. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry, I had a conflicting meeting actually right at this time, but uh, fortunately people were confused about that meeting and didn't show up, so I could just pay that. That is very fortunate. <laughs> Great. Yeah, <laughs> it was flagged as super important and nobody showed up. That's how important works today. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so we're waiting for, um, for Dave, I see. Yeah. Oh. Well, the question is, are, are we intending to proceed without him? I mean, uh, there's a lot of people here uh, making time for this, as I can see. Hi, all, by the way. Um, yeah. so. uh, Richard, my, uh, Michael uh, Richardson's on. So. Yeah. Um, this is uh, typically this is called quorum. So <laughs> you could just go through the uh, uh, item number. Oh my God, what was it? I think they're merged now. Six, I think. Oh, yeah, it's on the screen. I see. Yeah, they're the um, the trust model. Yeah. Michael, are you okay with that? And everybody else, of course. You are on mute. Oh, offline. He's sharing the screen, right? Uh, Michael, I'm uh, sorry. I think that was Michael sharing. Yeah. Come back to us. Oh, uh, he is texting me and is saying he can't even type. Webex has locked up his uh, machine and or his the, the, the application window he's working in. So, um, Webex is blocking him. Okay. So, which means that uh, uh, he, he I, I got control back. Meeting. I no, okay. well, I, yeah. So, I've noticed that WebRTC programs sometimes there's some big lock in the browser. And they, I, it, all the audio and video will continue functioning, but you can no longer open or close or do, interact with anything until something unlocks the the big spin lock. So, anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, I'm projecting the the things. What do you want to do? Five or six first? My notes tell me it's six. But um, is there a cross-reference between these? No, there isn't. So I would say uh, you could go with six first. So we were going to... Um, uh, we were going to... Uh, what were we going to do with this last week? We had some other changes we wanted to make. I thought we ran out of time. Oh, yeah, I, I think as a, my, my personal biggie is that we introduce the term attestation again and are not differentiating it in any way, which I uh, will not recommend at all. That is something that I noticed. Your, in your, problem, yeah. is, your problem is here. Yes, exactly. Because the uh, attestation is the, is actually the the, 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 the if, if we uh, pr this is called the appraisal we also have the appraisal policy exactly above this so maybe it's just a copy and paste error I assume um, because the appraisal policy are the rules how to uh, uh, test the evidence <clears throat> and um, attestation is the creation of the evidence effectively. So I think uh, what he is assuming here that attestation is the creation of the evidence, and uh, yeah, we have no good term for that. But I, I typically everybody refers to the whole procedure as attestation, and it causes confusion. But maybe somewhere in this room here would like to contradict me and say no, 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 attestation is a good term, but I think it's very overused and without any. I think uh, let's say call it in uh, prefixing or postfixing uh, um, term to it. 
it only adds to confusion typically so i think uh some somewhere there should be a definition of attestation since this is the attestation that's an attestation working group there should be a definition it's a remote attestation working group people sure. actually. yeah so uh, uh, if you define remote attestation, I'm fine with that. There ought, there ought to be some definition of what we think the, that word means, or that combination of words. I'm okay. I, I'm okay with not doing it right away or whatever. But granted, there are lots of uses of it, and it, people will potentially be confused by whatever it is we come up with, but. Yeah, by the way, if we're going to if we're going to define it, what's in the text right now is not it, because that last <laughs> phrase, that, by that last phrase, which then assesses its trustworthiness, we clearly don't use that in FIDO. In fact, we can uh, we allow for uh, something called the non attestation, uh, so that you know, relying rely parties who have no interest in dealing with the privacy implications of an attestation statement uh, don't have to get it. Uh, it's actually literally called a non-attestation, so it's a type of attestation that can, that provides no information on, its on the device trustworthiness. Mm. Uh, yeah, then we have to differentiate that very carefully. Uh, I have to think. And Giri, maybe maybe if we uh, work on this terminology, uh, you always have a, a um, observing eye on this that we at least differentiate out. Uh, in another term, maybe, what your specific non-attestation kind of uh, attestation content is, so that we don't never forget that, that the expressiveness is somehow maybe uh, uh, smaller or the scope might be bigger, and therefore the expressiveness is smaller, I don't know. That is an I think, important thing I to capture. Sure I, got, I got the term right. It's non-attestation? No. It's, you can put it in parentheses. N-O-N-E. N O N E. Yeah, it's a non attestation type. <laughs> okay. Uh, where there is no assessment. That's what you're saying. Yes. <clears throat> there's evidence exchange, but not an evaluation. No, there's not even not even any evidence. It's uh, it's just called non attestation. It's essentially like a uh, it would be like an unendorsed seat with a null payload. I'm not. Uh, okay. I, I, so the uh, <clears throat> that sounds similar to what the TCG would call implicit attestation. Yeah, we have to check that, and, and uh, I have to find out if that is true. If that is true, that is nice mapping. So, so the the eat in this scenario would be would be signed. Is that correct? And the signature would still have meaning. When I say unendorsed, it's not signed. <laughs> yeah, at least it's not signed with any attestation key. So, there's, there's I mean, no ah, what, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, is the evidence signed? There's no evidence. There's nothing to. Okay, so, let me, so you said that said yeah. something eat. There, there's a use. I guess that, I, I, I just, that, that's not in FIDO. Eat is not a standard yet, so FIDO doesn't refer to it. But I'm just saying, I'm giving, I, I'm sorry, you should scratch that. I think that's just confusing, confusing yeah. you guys. Let me, uh, okay, well, I, I'll just leave it as non attestation type. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we could yeah. we, we may, maybe okay, do so, from the TCG term because I think that. So I, I I propose we bring this 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 term to the that we omit this term for the moment, mm -hmm. uh, and that we bring it to the working group, and we say, well, if we don't if we don't define attestation or maybe it's remote attestation in the architecture document, then where would we define it? Um, and and if it's a if the it, and it might be that we're better to simply not define it because we can't get any reasonable agreement on what is a useful term. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it seems, it seems, even if we, if we don't define it, at least there should be some record of some conversation that says, here's all of the industry terms and usages of the, of the term. We think that it's, the industry is confused and 
whatever, but at least there's some document that we have to call the and people are aware of all the different ways that it's not used to different things. If we don't define it, and we for that reason, then I actually would like to say that we, in the document, that we don't define it for this reason. Yeah. I would think it would be helpful to get everybody's definition written down. Or here are some definitions of it from different places, and we are not, we're not, we avoid the term. Yeah, but the, I think the charter can help us here. Uh, I think the charter dares to delve into that domain already a little bit. It is talking about trustworthiness in its first paragraph a lot. And I think that is the goal here somehow. True. So we can, we can uh, 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 we be can da dance around in the scope of the charter. Sorry? But, right, so that can be one of the inputs to the different uses of the term, the term charter and whatever. We don't, if you decide not to define it, you can still point to the charter as... That's the part, the right part. Yeah, that is the part that the charter basically already... Let's call it defines, but this is the preamble of, of what this working group is intending to do. We sort of did this definition anticipation that, that the architecture would actually define for a while. That is true. Okay, so um, what I propose to do then is to open an issue. Um, uh, should architecture define attestation? See comments in uh, I think it's six. I screwed up and deleted that window. That tab. Don't need that anymore. Wait, have you all seen the, the note well? No, I don't see I see terminologies in data flow roles. No, I had the note well on the screen. I just want to know if you've ever seen the note well before. I know that some people haven't seen it. Never mind. It's a joke. Um, <laughs> now it's funny. I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried that some people on this list have not never been to an IETF and haven't seen a note well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was considering very seriously. Uh, are you? Are you? Uh, not you me. me. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen this one many times, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here we are back at this point. Um, I'm just going to grab all of this text and stick it into an issue. Uh, oh, look, it gives me at symbols here all on its own. Um. So the issue, so I think the resolution is that we, we should, we should accept this pull request without this term. And we also had these comments from last week, who is speaking at the appraisal policy? We didn't, we didn't put an owner over here. Um, and we were going to discuss that. And then Hanway has this comment. Does the known good value reference fall into endorsement or appraisal policy? It falls under policy. <clears throat> uh, it could be both based on how we do Yeah. We, we, we introduced a price policy initially to uh, not restrict uh, this to direct one-to-one -one comparison. So reference value had this, the known good value, reference value, have this um, um, connotation of uh, you do a one-to-one -one comparison, it's, it's binary, it's yes or no. 
And sometimes it's uh, like uh, the, the geo coordinates, you are inside that space or you're not inside this space, but you have a lot of coordinates. You cannot just compare them. You have to make a calculation. So it's more like a policy. So in order to be inclusive to that uh, idea that you don't have a string compare or a byte compare here, but you have the more computational effort to evaluate if the value is a uh, in order uh, and, and, and okay, uh, we, we up-leveled the term to appraisal policy, which includes reference values, uh, aka known good values, and other things you can falsify or verify, uh, therefore validate. And um, so I think that is the intent of the inclusion of the term appraiser policy. Bless you. Waiting to see what Michael's going to type here. Yeah. Is that, that what you were, I'm just trying to collect what what Hank yeah. just said between sneezing. That is exact. So so now we have to address this net. No, it could be both because that is just a statement and maybe just some explanatory text around that would be helpful. There was also some a comment and I think a question. So how can it? How can a known good value fault be an endorsement or a appraisal policy isn't an endorsement just a p component of an appraisal policy? Um, it could be. I think. I think again, it comes back to who's who's speaking. An endorsement is spoken by the supply chain entity. Appraisal policy is spoken by the owner. Could be exact. You know, it could be the exact same statement or a superset. Of the, you know, the way it's brought it. So, so it feels to me that, um, and if I could draw really quickly, I would do that. Um, it feels to me that we have a thing, call it X. A reference value is a subclass of it. Um, and this geo coordinates is another kind of subclass of it. Um, and when it's spoken by a supply chain entity, it's an appraisal policy. And when it's spoken by an owner, it's an endorsement. Uh, the other way around. The other way around. It's the, uh, the yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, for a supply chain entity, it's endorser, I think is our official term. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I, you corrected me. I, uh, and, um, so what is the X should we have it? It seems to me like the, the X is a thing itself that we haven't given a term for. I, I was, I was calling X, uh, an endorsement just because we ruled all of that out of scope. And it's just, it's a way to just say X, it's, uh, but I think, uh, Hank disagree, <clears throat> but that's how I was. Just thinking about endorsements as it's X. But but you said that it's endorsement if it's spoken by a supply chain entity. Uh, it's an endorsement if it's spoken by an endorser. That's the term we use, endorser. Ah, so endorsers can be supply chain entities or owners. Uh, uh, no, owners are owners. And okay, you know, if you go back to that other diagram, it shows. Yeah, that's appraisal that's... policy, right? We didn't define, right? So there's the so we have endorsers that produce endorsements, and we have uh, appraisal policies that consume evidence. Why is the evidence there? I don't know. I, don't know I think it's confusing, but it doesn't. It's not trying to be evidence. It's trying to be policy that applies to evidence. But we all are evidence. Of, it's, sorry, it's one word evidence appraisal policy. Yeah, it could just yeah. be yeah. A policy. Yeah, I so, think it doesn't need to have the evidence in front of it. So it, is there a um, is there a common object here that goes into the verifier that we wish to speak of abstractly? 
I think I personally think of endorsements as as going into the owner who then produces a appraisal policy. And even if it's passed through, at least he's blessed it and has, you know, the, the verifier may not trust, it may not be appropriate for the verifier to have a uh, trust anchor that trusts endorsers. He may only have a trust anchor to trust the owner, in which case he's only going to be able to act on endorsements if they are passed through the owner. And the owner essentially uh, and certainly the owner could configure a policy that says trust implicitly this endorser and put the endorsers um, trust anchor but again that's a delegation and it came by way of the owners having provisioned the, that trust anchor it still ends up going through the owner yeah. So I'm just trying to capture what you and what you just said and and Geary, go ahead. Yeah. So the way so uh, in other standard bodies that you know not me directly involved with, but other standard bodies that the other Qualcomm people are involved with, they when they talk about endorsements, they're literally talking about signing. So um, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing here. So, for instance, if I look at it as, 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 as from a device perspective, if it sends attestation evidence and it's signed, it's essentially been endorsed. So the device itself acts as an endorser. Oh and no! Everything yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. that's that's different. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're talking about something different. Thanks. So the endorsements, the one, one very important type of endorsement is when the attester cannot create uh, evidence for it. It's, it's like rock bottom of at a remote attestation. You at some point reach the function, for example, that signs your attestation evidence. It cannot uh, provide evidence for itself. This just does not work. So, so this, this function, for example, it resides, resides in a TEE space in, a, or in, in an ESE, a very specific uh, vetted environment, and is probably signed uh, function. And this signature has a trust anchor. And then this, this certificate, so the certification path, that is the endorsement of that function that provides you with the capability, the capability to trust those signatures and that make all the other things the evidence. But it cannot uh, provide evidence about itself. That is the, that it's just biting its own tail. So that doesn't work. So that is one very prominent type of endorsement we need from, from the, the, the trust anchor from the outside to understand that this component that is inside of your attester is trustworthy or supposed to be trustworthy, you cannot really measure that. Again, there's no evidence for this. You have to trust the external endorsement of that. And that is a very prominent version, I think. Um, so I'm just trying to capture what um, um, uh, I thought that Ned said in this diagram that the endorser creates endorsements that goes to the owner um, and the owner then uses them to create uh, policies, appraisal policies. Does this reflect what you just said to me, Ned? And that's different than the diagram that we had on the the GitHub. True, and because it adds the additional role of owner that we have avoided until today. Yeah, we we've, we've been we've been in the mode of nothing more complex than than three things. This now is five things. I, I think it's uh, it's it's uh you know they say make it simple but not too simple. I, I think honor is not too simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, this is my. I'm going to make it. Oh, yeah, I agree. That, 
Yeah, I'm going to make an attempt. Um, yeah, I think I think owner has to be in there as an entity um, uh, in order to make any sense out of these relationships at all. The owner is really the stakeholder in a way, yeah. right? They're the ones that are trying to make sure that this thing is what it claims to be. So. But I kind of want to go back to endorser. I've been really thinking over this term, and I, I, I didn't quite catch you. It's confused, but looking through the definition of endorse, it's really a signer. It's, what we're really looking for is something that the entity that provides a manifest. Think of this for a ship, right? In the old, you know, a ship where you know, the receiving dock gets a list of stuff that's supposed to be on the ship. That's a manifest. So what is the entity that produces the manifest? Is the shipper. Well, the shipper doesn't make sense in this context. I wouldn't use that word. But I'm kind of, I am kind of worried about using the term endorser as being the thing that sign, simply signs something. So I'm just, I am worried about adding confusion by using the term endorser because it wouldn't come natural mm -hmm. to me uh, of what that means. Yeah, I'd have to read the definition in the context of what we're doing here in order to understand what we mean by endorser. And I'm trying to, I think we should try to come up with terms that relate to people without having to look up into one of our glossaries. I don't have a better word. I'm just issuing a concern. Yeah, I mean, we've had, we've had that conversation multiple times and we ended up with that word. So, uh, yeah, and it's really hard. Sorry, sorry, Gary, go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, this came up specifically in the context of global platform, right, which is, you know, the TE standardization body. So our representative there came back to me and asked me specifically about how is RAS dealing with the topic of unendorsed tokens. And what they were looking at as unendorsed tokens was the conveyance of attestation evidence without a signature, basically. They were basically saying we can put it in a code day envelope, but we just don't want to encrypt it or sign it because we have a trusted communications link between whoever is providing the attestation evidence and the and the verifier. So that is that's what, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's, so, I mean, that's a solid example of people who are thinking of endorsement as being something very different from what is being, uh, what is being discussed here. So, I, I understood that we had put in the use case that this was the reason for this desire of this term. Um, I'm going to get it raw backwards here, probably with static attestation and what was the other term? Go look at the document itself. Um, that that the, the the link provided uh, implicit roles uh, there, and that you didn't need to sign anything within the link. And that's what you're talking about. Sorry, Mike, I couldn't would really what I would call yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, that, yeah. that would be what I would call explicit Static. session attestation. session attestation. That what you're describing is a ses session attestation because. Um, you don't need to sign it because the link itself is is providing the the security. Absolutely, yes, exactly. Just, your that use case was describing a, an an evidence flow, not a what we're calling an endorsement flow. Yeah, that is true. This is about the trustworthiness of evidence because the the the, ch the secure channel evidence flows and guarantees the integrity of the evidence, and therefore the evidence inside the secure channel is, is not necessarily signed because you trust this channel so hard that it, that you, you you believe even if it's not signed that this is trustworthy evidence. That is the session. Uh, attestation we were referring to that is I don't think it's independent of endorsement. So it, it is indirectly signed, right? It's indirectly signed because the container, the the envelope that you're shipping this in, how do you trust it? So you would have established some trust in the channel. Yes. In a way, in in a way, it's kind of implicitly signed, or indirectly signed is a better word. 
I think that's why they use the term indoors. It's more general than signing, but it means signing essentially. All right, and that's the true meaning of indoors. And that's where I'm a little concerned about, mm. about what we were, according to the diagram, what we're using the term indoors is someone saying, this is what it should be. I mean, think about, again, go back to the manifest. I have this piece of paper that says, I should have this many containers on this ship. And at the bottom of that, someone signed it and said, yes, I approve this list. Let's make a distinction between who signed it and the list itself. So we had a conversation about some terminology that we thought was, was relevant, uh, not role specific, but relevant. And one of those words was assertion. So, so we could, we could say it was valid to use the word assertion for any of the roles, because any of the roles could assert something. Uh, it might make sense to say that endorse is also one of those kinds of terms where an assertion, an assert, an endorsed assertion, um, you know, has authenticity and an unendorsed assertion does not. That could all, that all seems to make sense to me. I, I can go there, it makes sense, but we still are lacking a term for the role specific uh, assertion of supply chain entity provided endorsements or you know, fill in the blank. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm gonna look up under, I think a model of, to follow, terminology model to follow would be um, ISO, um, Swid tax. Uh, one, one of the things I'll take an action item to go do is, is to look at that specification. Not inventing new terms is a really good idea. And Swid tags are very widely deployed now. Okay, we can look into that. But I, but I think Swid tags is a subset of the information that is going to be communicated over that channel. And yeah, but one of the reasons why the more generic endorser makes sense is because we define it, it allows us to talk about those other kinds of assertions that can be that describe trustworthiness beyond what a SWID tag can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I think so tech is general, but let me let me go look and look at our use cases and compare them. So, but in gen in general, I think we also say we are uh, we use the term claim. We just say that <clears throat> anything is a claim, and an endorser could assert claims. Yeah, well, again, sorry, we are using claim as a synonym to assertion at the moment. I think. Maybe, yeah. Uh, because because claim uh, was well understood coming from the uh, uh, um, CWT side, uh, but uh, I always had a little bit of a problem, never objected too hard, but still having a little bit of the problem that the claim definition of CWT is a data model thing. And with assertion, we most certainly don't stick down to the data model. Yeah, and I don't, I don't like the convention that we would say <clears throat> you know, entity asserts an assertion. That seems weird. <laughs> That's a true. Yeah. Right. So it makes sense to say they can assert a claim. And then the question really is, is the claim specific to an encoding of some sort, or uh, is it is it just an information model concept? You know, I'm I'm a <clears throat> I'm okay either way if if we use it sort of synonymously with assertion, just because we don't want to have to say assert, the assert you know, asserts an assertion. That just is clunky. I, I'd rather say they assert a claim. Have it in the context of you're either asserting claims as evidence, or you're asserting claims as, in this case, endorsements, or you're asserting claims policy or you're asserting claims as attestation results you know that 
terminology makes sense in any context. Yeah, we should at least capture that because I think the uh, asserting a claim sounds reasonable to me. Again, claim, claim and assertion are basically synonyms outside the ITF. The, the, the ITUT basically never uses footnotes. And there's one footnote in the, in the glossary of the ITUT document about secure identities and such that says claim and, certain, and assertions are basically synonyms. There is no relevant distinction here. And in ITF, they are unfortunately claimed, so to speak, by claim is claimed by, by CWT. And therefore, they have a very specific meaning here. And yeah, I don't know how to deal with that. I, I, I literally, I was, it was not so, this was one of the less, least important things to bigger about. So I just didn't really, um, yeah. yeah, took a side there. A lot of it's just, you know, readability. And sometimes you don't have, you don't intend to have super precise meanings of things, you know, yeah, it's like yeah, speaking yeah. Latin. Sometimes Latin's good because it's gener has some generality allows for some generality, right? So um, why use why stick to Latin? We have so many other languages we could exactly. steal words from. <laughs> so yeah, I don't you know it's go just, for Latvian instead of Latin. Latvian. There we go. Um yeah, but I think I right know. now just we're using the we're using claim more generally than specifically we're using at assertion more generally than specifically. Okay, so what do you think of this redone diagram? I think it's fine. We just in in the the the, the thing that's now not clear is the policy that is going into relying party that doesn't have an owner. <clears throat> Policy that's going into the attestation result appraisal policy. Oh, it doesn't have a pol. You, it needs to have something else. Okay. Speaking, but it didn't had before. It was intentionally open by Dave, I think. But but maybe it should have a source. I don't know. I think it. I think it has an owner, but it may be different from the other owner. Okay. So, um, is there a relevance on putting stars around the endorser? I think there is. Rather than because I think that the owner and the endorser are out of scope, yeah. and that's why we put stars around them. Now, what would you like to put above the um, above the uh, um, above the attestation result appraisal policy? What would you? Well, if you put stars around, maybe it works to just put stars around it so we know that it's out of scope. Um, sorry, let me interject here for just a, as, a, as a logistical part. Um, we do plan to recharter, and we do plan to have that in scope. So, um, do we? We can we can address that by doing if this is released as a bis, and then change that, or we can just not use stars. I don't know if scoping in this level on this that document makes sense. If you think it does, please do. I just wanted to highlight. It might yield unnecessary churn. That is the only thing I want to say. Uh, well, um, got a third option for <laughs> in this program. <laughs> um, not yet in scope. Uh, attestation result appraisal policy. So there's a. Uh, why, why does the attestation result appraisal policy go into the relying party? Why isn't that a relying party policy? Um, because the attestation result typically is consumed by the relying party and it has to understand it and has to react on it. Shall I talk to my service now or not? I don't really know. I have to understand the attestation result in order to understand how to now react to my trustworthy. Uh, I, get, I, I get it. So, so it, it's... it's Good. Attestation result uh, appraisal policy, not an appraisal policy. So the first one is actually an endorsement appraisal policy. <clears throat> I have a question. Is this one thing 
Whereas there's two things. It seems, it, it seems like it's one thing. That's a fishing it's result. One thing. It's a policy. It's a relying party policy. And whether we call it, you know, something complex or we just make it simple, if we if we if we call it if we use all these names that we've defined terms for, then that it gives us the impression that the relying that we have to specify for more about what the relying party is than we really want to, given that the relying party is essentially out of scope. The attestation result is in scope, the relying party is out of scope. Or at least oh, I've lost uh, the words evidence here. Yeah. So yeah. So, so, so somewhere in the middle of relying party, it's, you know, it's out of scope. We didn't really clearly define that, but. Yeah, the, 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 the interesting part here is that the relying party is the consumer of all of this. The relying party wants to know if its peer is trustworthy, if it can act on this information and just go on or has to stop acting. Um, so it's a, it's a very relevant party but doesn't really do much architectural wise. It we just said, consumes the results. We said that the any arrow that comes out of the relying party is out of scope. Mm. Uh, With the exception of relaying evidence. Well, that's a cool combination of roles if you go down. Ah, yeah, 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 true, yeah, true. Sorry, I've withdrawn that comment. <laughs> So I guess I don't understand. You've got an arrow coming out of the verifier to the relying party, and then you got another input into the relying party called attestation. Oh, I see. Okay, so that makes sense. The right, the arrow on the right. I still can't figure out that one. That one. Yeah, what is that? I know it was in the original diagram. So <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm it's just trying to. Just yeah. so what what does the reliant party need? Does it need to have, since it relied on the verifier to do the job? And this is just a question. I'm not just saying one way or the other. Does the reliant party need anything besides a yes or no, which I'm guessing, or maybe there's a value statement, but a yes or no from the verifier? Yes, the, the, the relied on the verifier to do to enforce a policy. It should probably know what that policy is, but it doesn't need to know any more details about it. Otherwise, it turns into the verifier. That that is to an extent very true. They they, they think that the, the the thing here that was always said was that we are we do not want to be binary here. There is not only a yes or no. There can be a yes or no. That is the simplest can case. Be. Yes, and, uh, and and if it is less simple, uh, then it has it requires policies. That's all this says actually, and we don't even define the source. We don't define the format. Actually, this is all out of scope. They think it's 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 the the the, the, the uh, anchor like the, the the socket for 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 all the things you want to now start like remediation or anything else. I don't know, right. but uh, but I think it's actually. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not convinced it's out of scope. I think in, in your example, right, mm -hmm. the relying party, let's say the, um, the tester is version two, and version two's got a vulnerability in it, and version three is fixed, for example. Okay, the relying party might say, well, I'm going to let, if it's version two, I'm going to let it do a subset of things. I'm not going to let it do everything. But I'm actually going to want to send it over to get remediated if it wants to do a second step, right? So it's entirely possible that the relying party doesn't just get a binary, but it has to understand the policy to some extent in order to make further decisions. And the risk is I don't want to turn the relying party into another verifier. But I think if we're going to let the relying party have some knowledge of the appraisal policy, then I think the appraisal policy that goes in the verifier, that, which is in scope, I think it's in scope for this work to just talk about the policy, the understanding, whatever it is, that we're going to give to the relying party, right? To say, oh, 
the verifier did all this work for me, and it came up with an answer. I need to go look up what that answer means by understanding what policy was applied by the verifier. So I think I think this is a valid use case, and I think this is in scope. So so, so I I I don't want to disagree with you because I think that what you said is 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 accurate. I think the distinction is that. Um, the relying party um, is uh, is not interested in the version of something. The it's interesting. It's interested in uh, whether whether or not it's attested by the 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 right verifier. Um, the simple case is yeah, so, so you're party. arguing you're arguing that it's a it's a binary it's a true false uh, is, no, I think the verifier the verifier could as a part of, a, of its result uh, generate a new claim that's that's different from the claims that arrived as evidence but it's still defined over our claims. Uh, vocabulary. You know, an example might be um, that the attester has an identity and a bunch of uh, information about the versions of software that it's running. The verifier verifies the software and then produces a claim that says this this attester has this identity claimed by the verifier. My party just has a policy that says, um, I trust this if it has this identity. But it still has to evaluate the identity claim. Therefore, yes. it requires the verifier. Binary. <clears throat> All right. So, so I guess I'm, is, I'm trying to make the argument not. that the, the verifier has a whole bunch of detail it's got to deal with. And, in a, in a TPM, for example, an explicit application, it's going to have the event log and everything else, and it's going to come up with a decision. And I think what I'm what I think is it seems like the message from the verifier to the reliant party is some sort of reduction of all of that information. And again, maybe it's two things: no, don't allow this; yes, allow it, but I want you to remediate it, or I recommend remediation, or three. You know, this thing's good to go. And it might have com come to those three conclusions based on a massive amount of data that it processed on behalf of the relying party. Yeah. So, but I, th I think it's important to distinguish between a reduction and a decision. Decision implies that there's some context over what the resources, what the resource is that's being controlled. Raise reduction does not imply that it just is a reduction. That's if we were to draw this relying party. If we were to expand this diagram a little bit further, the the relying party would be in control of a resource, and they in the position of being the enforcement point for access to that resource wouldn't necessarily imply that the verifier has to be the resource owner and have knowledge of the resource in order to come up with a decision about access. So, so that, that's actually a really good way to look at this, is who actually owns the resource? Is it the lying party? This, who's the decision maker? I'm not convinced you want the verifier to be the decision maker. Exactly. Decision maker is simply, yeah, I think the verifier just does the reduction I'm not sure that's the right word, but that's the one that comes to my mind right now. Comes to says yes or no, you know, and then it's up to somebody else to go say, Shh, I'll, I'll let him in, you know, it's worthwhile. And I, I guess so. I'm thinking of like a safe, piece of safety equipment. If you read any of the regulations, you you know, you you have to have authorization to get into a piece of equipment, with the exception of a safety critical operation. Somebody, you know, you might have an override switch that says, hey, if this thing's on fire, I don't care about authorizing the user. I'm not going to hold off because you typed in the wrong password to shut down the system. 
right? The safety system, have, somebody has to make a decision, right? So I don't, I think the verifier, the role verifier is, did the username match the identity? And the answer is yes or no. It's up to somebody else, some other entity, to go make a decision to override that. Yeah, so I think we're in agreement. To me, that, when you say yes or no, I think what you're saying is trustworthy or not trustworthy. Ah, uh, yes, a, a better word, yes. Yeah. I will make some assertion of my evaluation, right? And then it's up to you, I guess even a better word is like an attorney and a client, right? The attorney can tell the client, I think you shouldn't do this against my legal advice to do this or not. But the attorney doesn't make the decision, the client makes the decision. The client takes the risk. So maybe that's a better, and in which case the verifier is the role of the attorney saying this is legal, this is not legal, right? Yeah. But it's entirely up to the client to make the decision as to whether to go take the action or not. The attorney doesn't make the decision, the client does. That's a pretty subtle distinction. Um, that's, uh, I think it's many, many people don't, in the world don't understand that. Um, so at the top of the hour, um, one of the results is, first of all, question, are you happy with the changes I made to the diagram? Do you I like the alignment of the words appraisal at both sides, both sides um, or not? Yeah, to show them. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. okay. Um, and the other question is, we discussed uh, removing the word attestation from the terminology and saying that this document rely does not use the term attestation uh, and then provides a series of links to other places where it has been defined? I would not make that a final decision. I would still try to find remote attestation as with as by the charter text. Yeah. I say I say do the exercise and then uh, see if we can come to an agreement of what it means. And if we can then put it in the vocabulary. So so what you would like to do is to temporarily remove it from the terminology. Go go collect a bunch of definitions from other places and see if we can, can make them uh, compatible. Yeah. If we can't, fine. If we can, okay. great. So I'm just going to sort of write that into the text. Okay. Uh, testation. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm Does everyone have to for, leave? Yeah, I got, I, I got to take off uh, for another meeting. So uh, then I'm going to make an attempt at sharing. I don't know if I can. Well, we'll see. Good luck. Anyway, thanks. And um, I guess we're doing this every week now, right? Uh, at least for a while. We, we'll probably obviously break for Christmas. Um, and right. um, so what does that put us as next week? Is the only date? Then we're done? Yeah. So next week, and and then we won't meet again until the probably the seventh. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, uh, seventh. Talk yeah. to you next week. Thank you. This is good. Okay. Good. All right. So I'm going to share that, and um, this document will include pointers to industry uses of the terms in an attempt to gain consensus around the term and be consistent with the charter text defining this term. Uh, so maybe this is an editorial note. Is that is that does that express our our desire at this point? If you can read that, yeah. Monty, you want to type something?
he may have dropped to go to the other meeting. Okay, I just he said he couldn't talk, couldn't speak, so uh, I thought I would give him a chance to type if he had a something to interject here. Yeah, typically for me, this is also a uh, top of the hour stop meeting. So, uh... Good. all right. Well, uh, I will post. Uh, do we want to accept this pull request as as is now? I cannot see the complete implication, but I don't know. This was the di diagram changes. Diagram changes. There's the terminology. Uh, sorry, I'm not showing that screen. So all this terminology actually that we've been discussing uh, is in the pull request. Okay. Um, yeah, we have to check the other items, I assume. At least we have to have Dave with us when we uh, accept this, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll wait till next week. Um, yeah. uh, do you want me to post this question to the list or do you want to just bring it up to the list when we're ready? Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. Just, but at some point we want to start having the conversation of throw out your initials. All right, maybe that's better to we, we consent we we get some consensus among ourselves. Uh, throw in some definitions that we have next week, and um, um, and then we'll put the question to the list, uh, perhaps in the new year because I don't think we'll get much conversation uh, if we ask. On December twentieth or something. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'm done. We're done. Okay. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah.